Imagine this. You ask AI to design a building that looks like Zaha Hadid and Frank Gehry collaborated. And a few seconds later, voila, you get this. While it's fun to play with, it does raise a serious question. If AI can already mimic famous architect style, what does that mean for the role of architects? And what does that mean for the developers that hire them? That is the future that Phil Bernstein talks about in his book, Machine Learning, Architecture in the Age of AI. Phil was actually my former dean at Yale, and he was also the VP at Autodesk before joining Yale. So he has been at the front seat of technology, academia, and practice. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for coming back. My name is Ethne, and I talk about real estate and architecture in my channel. I am a recent graduate of the Yale School of Architecture and Yale School of Management. Today I'm starting a new series, my first professional deep dive, and I thought what's a better place to start than answering the question that everyone is asking, what happens to the building industry if AI takes over its work? I came across Phil's book Machine Learning in 2022 when it first published. It's the first book that discusses the AI transition in the building industry, focusing on the changing role of architects. The book is structured in three parts. First is process, how AI could change the way architects work. Second, relationships, how it might shift the economics between architects, developers, and contractors. And lastly, results, how it could transform the entire business model of the industry. Many of his arguments are very reflective. Phil discusses how BIM has never shifted or upgraded the building industry the way we hoped it did. Even today, the industry's digital data is highly fragmented and oftentimes unreliable, and how AI could potentially shift the value of architects to software developers. At the same time, Phil suggests that AI could help us tackle some of the hardest challenges in the built environment, such as reducing carbon emission, increasing building energy efficiency, and I'm thinking maybe even housing affordability issue and potentially a revolutionized data-driven real estate industry in the future. Personally, I'm very intrigued by the possibility. Would AI not only change the way we design, but bring a new value proposition to the real estate industry? Part one of the book, Phil brings up a sharp point. BIM has improved modeling and documentation techniques, but it did not fundamentally improve the value architects bring, which are, for example, analytical evaluation of space or systems integration across MEP, structural, and civil engineers. This is probably why many small firms are still hold on to the CAD practice because they simply do not believe that BIM will bring them any immediate financial or productivity rewards. And despite the slow adoption of BIM system, Phil suggests a future of digital twins, which is a living digital replica of buildings that continuously update to mirror reality. And eventually the entire building environment could have a 100% digital replica living in the metaverse or the cloud. I feel like although the development pushed by BIM seems small and incremental, but without it, this concept of digital twins would not be possible. BIM would still be the foundation that we cannot skip, we cannot ignore, and we need to keep building. I don't know how long it would take for digital twins to be realistic, but I feel like it could add great cultural and economic value to society. So if there are so many upsides to the AI transition, then what's holding us back? As of now, the building industry's data is highly fragmented and often private due to intellectual property rights. Unlike the open internet that can be used for training large language model, such as for chat GPT, the building industry just simply do not have an open common for architectural data. And I think there's another layer to it. Not all data are digitized. Currently, the available BIM data are highly concentrated in European American practices. And that training data is simply not complete. It does not capture that the diversity of the architectural world. Think vernacular architecture, ancient buildings, they're simply not digitized yet. And training such incomplete data can be very dangerous for the diversity of this field. The book also breaks down an architect's value into three parts, talent, experience, and skill. And the unfortunate reality is that a machine can learn from thousands of projects in seconds, far beyond the ability of anyone's entire career. The only catch is this, a machine cannot understand culture and life that a person does. And those understandings shape the way an architect curates space 
And that is still important insights to bring to the industry. For part two of the book, Phil talks about relationships, in particular, the economic proposition of architects in the age of AI and how this could shift the economic power dynamics in this industry. We all know that AI redistributes value. The common assumption is that more money will flow from the architects to software developers, while the traditional architectural labor will be devalued. And this will further the gap between so-called skilled labor and unskilled labor. So in the future, if software takes care of documentation and coordination, who gets paid more? The architects that deliver the project or the software engineers that develop the program? Will these two industries merge or collaborate or will they compete for value? And if they compete, who holds the higher ground? The data gatherer or the creative? These are questions that we simply do not have the answers for just yet because we simply don't know how this industry is going to shift. But I feel like the first movers will definitely get a bigger pie and the rest of the industry will have to adapt and adopt. Also, for the developers, traditionally they hire architects for the unique value they bring. For example, star architects like Frank Gehry gets to charge an extremely high fee. However, if the human branding elements is taken out of the equation, how much more are developers willing to pay for the service? We literally already see this in practice. For example, after the tragic passing of Zaha Hadid, her practice still carries on learning from her style and producing great architecture based on her experience and her past projects. Isn't that what AI does anyway? Here, Phil is relatively optimistic. He suggests that instead of focusing on what's replaced, AI could also help us tackle some of the historically difficult challenges in the industry, such as accurate prediction of energy efficiency and reducing carbon emission. Here, I share the same hope. Perhaps AI can help us push forward areas in this industry where it's traditionally held back by politics or professional culture, because unlike humans that are easily swayed and can be influenced by societal and environmental pressure, AI would be operating on pure logic and pure goal of optimization, whether it's optimizing energy or optimizing cost. The last part of the book, results. Here Phil talks about how the industry might evolve and move forward. Today, most of the projects still operate as a owner, architect, contractor triangle. And historically, it hasn't been like that. Think a century ago, there were times where architects were also in charge of the contractor's job. And there were times for, such as Antonio Gaudi, who was both the architects, but also the structural engineer vision provider. So this triangle that has been um, somewhat adopted as an industry norm will likely shift. And here I think Phil's point is that AI could help us reduce some of the more laborious work of architects and help architects focus on vision, on outcome, and the strategy of the projects. I really like that throughout this book, Phil's tone is very neutral and cautiously optimistic. And I think that is very refreshing because in this industry, new technology are oftentimes hyped as salvation or simply dismissed as threat because let's be honest, the architecture and real estate industries have been relatively conservative and slow movers in the technology transition. Whereas tech, it's disruptive, it's fast moving, and it's highly experimental. So I think where these two areas clash is where the future is going to unfold. The question that remains is that will the AI transition of the building industry be monopolized by large tech like Autodesk or will it have a more open and democratic playground? We don't know that yet. So would I recommend reading this book? Absolutely, yes. Not just because he was my professor. For me, I think AI is coming to this industry no matter we like it or not. And, th and the question is, will this industry adopt and adapt or will this industry simply react to it because everything else is transitioning? Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any thoughts, please comment down below. Please like and subscribe if you like my content. See you next time.